Member for South West Coast. I'm honoured to rise to join my colleagues and pay tribute to the Honourable Digby Crozier, MLA, MLC, and to recognise the legacy of a man who gave so much to the western region of Victoria as a member of this place for 15 years. Digby had a well-earned reputation for being a hard-working local representative, dedicated to his community and highly respected from Casterton to Warrnambool, Horsham to Portland, Hamilton to Geelong and right around this great western region where he proudly served for many years. I would also like to offer my deepest sympathy and pay my respects to my colleague Georgie Crozier, her sister Annabelle and brother John who are keenly feeling the loss of their beloved father. Georgie, who is following in her father's footsteps, is continuing the family legacy of providing good governance and service to the Victorian people. I know Annabelle and John are great support to their sister in her role. Georgie embodies the essence of public service and leadership like her father before her. Georgie, your dedication to your constituents and community reflect the noble values instilled by your dad, Digby. Your background that your father highlighted would stand you in good stead as a nurse, he was quite correct about. And I have deep respect for you and the heart you bring to the role. Mm -hmm. I never worked with Georgie, but I know many women who I did work with in Western Victoria who did. And I remember Judy Stewart, you'll recall Judy, who uh, told me probably a year ago um, about her experiences working with uh, Georgie Crozier as a nurse and what a great nurse she is was, we never, ever stopped being. <laughs> it is an honour for me to represent today the same region that Digby served so well for all those years and pay homage to this great man on behalf of so many. So many people across Western Victoria have contacted me since Digby's passing to share their stories of their own experience of a man of dignity and morals and pay tribute to the compassion courage and commitment Digby displayed, serving them so proudly. Digby was a fellow with a broad background, serving with the Royal Australian Navy straight out of school from 1945 to 1946, during the tumultuous period of World War II. It was an indication of the drive in Digby to proudly serve his country and his community that was something he would realise to its full capacity over the years to come in this place. Digby understood the western region of Victoria and had a grazing property at Wando Vale near Casterton. Digby's love of the land and agriculture were evident throughout his life. He understood and was a capable farmer himself, with locals today still recalling the skill and expertise Digby showed around livestock. His understanding and love of agriculture made him a quality representative for the rural community. On April 20th, 1957, Digby married Jill Salter and they had four children together, John, Will, Georgie and Annabelle. Jill too was known for her strong devotion to the communities of Western Victoria, alongside her commitment and dedication to the Liberal Party. There was never any doubt that Digby was driven by rural issues, nor by his passion for agriculture. Digby's time as a councillor at the Glenelg Shire from 1965 to 1973 was evidence of this. As a councillor, Digby was a strong spokesperson for rural and regional development, agriculture and country roads, serving as Shire president from 1967 to 1968, in which he remains fondly remembered. Hailing from beautiful, blue, uh, beautiful red gum country in our state's vast west, Digby was passionate about the role of the Country Fire Authority, particularly CFA volunteers, and was himself active for decades as a CFA volunteer in our region. It gave him great pride to see that his son John remains an active CFA volunteer despite the challenges they have faced in recent years under this state Labor government. I know Digby personally was terribly disappointed by how the CFA was being treated and this lack of gratitude that hardworking volunteers have received for all they do protecting and serving our country communities. Digby's passion for, to advocate and serve his country, his community only grew and Digby was elected to the Victorian Legislative Council in 1973 as a Liberal member for Western. 
When speaking with the Honourable David Hawker AO, who himself served as the member for Warnon for many years, David tells me that Digby and Jill worked hard for the community, door knocking, speaking with the constituency and gaining always a deeper and deeper understanding of what the region needed. Digby was a committed worker and not afraid to pound the pavement, roll up his sleeves and get things done. In 1976, his hard work and dedication was further recognised when he was elected as the, a minister to the Hamer Cabinet just three years after joining the parliament. According to Digby, I think I was the most astonished person in the room, but what a terrific job he did. Digby's successor, the Honourable D Dennis Napthine, recounted to me that this surprise was a good indication of the humble man that Digby was and how respected he was by his colleagues. At his core, Digby was a man driven by old school principles, principles such as doing for the community and for others and caring for those who are disadvantaged. Digby did this humbly. Digby never put himself on a pedestal, never big noted himself, and when he saw something that needed doing, he just got on with it, a true man of the country. As a sheep and cattle farmer from the Western District, Digby saw his passage to the Hamer Cabinet as a win for our great state rural regions. And it certainly was, with Digby using this position to be a strong voice and advocate for rural and regional communities. Digby was keenly aware that agriculture was the backbone of the state and was a champion of this section, sector. He also understood the importance of investing in our roads. Digby, like all of us in my electorate, was dismayed by what has become of the Victorian roads in recent times after decades of neglect from Brax, Brumby, Andrews and now Allen. It was this lack of investment in regional areas Digby had addressed as part of a Liberal government because he understood that Victoria's prosperity lies in its regional communities. During this time in the Legislative Council, Digby served as Minister for State Development, Decentralisation and Tourism, Local Government, Minerals and Energy. He was also Deputy Liberal Leader in the Upper House from 1978 to 1979. In 1985, Digby transferred to the Legislative Assembly, winning the seat of Portland. He was Shadow Minister for Police and Emergency Services from 1985 to 1988. Throughout his time in Parliament, Digby remained committed to regional development. When taking on the role of Minister for Minerals and Energy, he was quoted as saying, I look to the energy portfolio as one of the most challenging of the 80s. It is a statement that continues to hold true today. Digby was a visionary and fought hard for a transmission line to be incorporated into the western region of Victoria. He could recognise the benefits for industry and businesses large and small to have access to this resource. Digby was right, of course, and his vision for, for Victoria would have made our state a far more prosperous place had successive governments continued the pathway set by Digby. Digby, it can be honestly said, left a proud legacy for our state like few others. Digby was the minister who had the vision to turn Victoria into a state of cities, not a city state. I'll repeat that. He had a vision to return Victoria into a state of cities, not a city state. He realised that the Victorian future was bigger than Melbourne and that Victoria, for it for, to truly succeed, its regions must be supported, not exploited, and the government must govern from border to border. As Minister for Decentralisation, Digby lived and breathed this mission, and the livelihoods of so many today are better because of his politics. It is a tremendous shame that modern governments have abandoned Digby, Digby's vision to govern outside the tram tracks, and invest in building up Victoria's rural and regional communities. Digby wanted, as part of a, prouder, a proud Hamer Liberal government, to develop and support manufacturing right across the state. He backed in blue-collar workers and was committed to the success of industry development, especially in what is now my electorate of South West Coast. As a senior member of the Hamer government, Digby was instrumental in bringing the aluminium smelter to Portland and was in fact referred to by many as the father of the smelter. What a tremendous legacy the smelter has been for Portland and the South West, creating thousands of local jobs, investment and industry opportunity for our whole and entire region. 
The smelter has provided thousands of locals with high paying jobs, along with many more jobs in related industries. And so many I speak with today are grateful for Digby's accomplishments, which truly put Portland and Southwest Coast on the map. Again, this vision of Digby's has been shamefully ignored by recent Labor governments. I know that Digby can be proud of his legacy and his contribution to public life and to the community. And this feeling is shared right across the region Digby served. In 1998, Digby retired from politics, but he did not retire from serving the community he loved, and he went on to be Western Local Government Commissioner, again demonstrating he lived a life of service and supporting his community. Digby Crozier will be remembered and cherished as a man devoted to his community. Digby Crozier, yours was a life well lived, and with a profound dedication to your community, leaving a lasting impact on the lives of Victorians but in particular, your beloved Western region, your legacy embodies the epitome of public service and for that, you will always be remembered with much respect. Vale, the Honourable Digby Crozier.